get started. Okay, so last week what we looked at was the opening principles, right? We were looking at some of the basic things that we should be doing in the opening. And, uh, one second. Oh, I don't think I'm sharing my screen actually. All right, can you guys see my screen? Yeah. I can right. yes. Yeah, yeah, I can. Nice. Okay. So, basically, what we were doing last time is we were looking at the few starting opening principles, right? And today what we're going to be doing is looking deeper and deeper into the opening and seeing what uh the main opening principles they should follow to get a good position. So can anyone tell me what are the three parts of chess? There's the opening, and then what are the other two? Do you guys remember? If you remember, uh, you could just raise your hand and Google me, and then I can call on you. All right, so, all right, let's think about this. It's the opening, so the game starts, and it's the opening. Then. The second part is it's in the middle, right? So it's really easy to remember. It's just the middle game. It's the opening and then the middle game because the middle game is in the middle. And then last we have the end game because the end game is at the end. So the last two are really simple. The opening is the only one that's like sounds slightly weird, but that's just because the game is opening at the start. So it's the opening, then the middle game, then the end game. Those are the three parts of a chess game. So today we're going to be looking at the opening. So uh, I think last time we looked at, I think, two or three major things that you should be doing at the start of every game. So uh, does anybody want to give an example of a good move that you can play for white in this position? Um, Venegopo? By the way, if I'm like yeah. saying your name wrong, you can call me Shri. You can call me Shri. Shri, okay, Shri. And the first, like the pawn in front of the queen, you can move it to, uh, you can move it to four. All right, the pawn okay. to d four. All right, yeah, and that's a good try, move. And then try to get both, the, and then try to get the the other pawn in front of the king yeah. to make the same. Position refused. Okay. All right. Nice. Well, we... Okay. And how about um, Indica? Mm -hmm. Is that your name? My name is actually Nicholas. Um, my thing was wrong, so it went under my mom's name. All right, Nicholas. So for now, just call me like my last name is Nick Espin. So my name is actually mm -hmm. Nicholas Espin. Okay. Um. Uh, can you? Do the um, the one where you switch the rook, the the castle, and the king. Oh yeah, that yeah, you're on the right track. So that's called castling, right? So you move the king two squares to the right, and then the rook jumps over the king. All right. Now that is a common idea, but you can't do that immediately. Basically, the only way that castling works is that the king and the rook, they need to have nothing in between them. So you see right now, between the king and the rook, there's this piece, right? There's the knight and there's the um, bishop. So let's just imagine that... Um, let me try something here. Imagine if this was the starting position, all right? Somehow, like, the bishop and the knight are gone. Then, yes, you could castle immediately. The king can move two squares to the right, and then the rook jumps over. But if you notice in the starting position, the bishop and knight are there. So you can't do that immediately. So, uh, but castling is a good idea. Do you know why castling is a good idea? Um, so that you can protect your king in, an, in another position. Nice, that's exactly right. So basically, when you castle, your king is protected by this wall of pawns and this rook. Because usually, like um, Shri said before, you usually end up moving one of these pawns, right? You move this pawn 
mm -hmm. or you, and you move this pawn. And now you can see that this king is slightly weak, right? There's like so many squares in front of it. And that, but then you could get checked, and then you might get checkmated there. So to save yourself from that, you try and castle. Okay. Yeah. So okay. um, now we've got so castling. All right. Now first, that's what Shree said was the first step of chess, of the chess game. You want to move your pawns into the center, and usually to move your pawns into the by the way, the center is these four squares. It's just like the middle of the board. And the it's really important to control the center because if you do that, then you can attack later in the game. Okay. So now we have moving a pawn into the middle. Okay. And let's say you're, I'm just going to play like slightly random moves for black. Don't play like exactly what black is doing i'm just trying to show you from white's perspective and then we'll look at like an actual game of how this would look like okay so i moved my pawn into the center d4 and let's say my opponent played here d6 all right then now the second part is i move a pawn into the center and now i'm trying to get my pieces out specifically which pieces so i don't want to bring my rooks out right like the rooks are fine where they are. Like, it's not very easy to bring them out. If I bring out my queen, there's a very important rule in chess, which is if you bring out your queen too early, you're going to start getting your queen attacked. All right? This is very important rule. So let's say here, I played here. And now my opponent, he develops his knight. Okay? Now let's say I keep on moving my queen. Let's say I move it here. Let's say I go here. All right? Then he'll develop his bishop. He develop basically means just move his bishop, right? And now he moved his bishop, and it's attacking my queen. So then I have to move my queen again. So now let's say I move here. Looks like I gave a check. Well, now a black can move his pawn forward. Now block attacking my queen. And you see how now, let's say I go back. Now in this position look at this position and now just go back a few moves this position basically the queen and the pawn are in the same spot but now black has two extra pieces that have been moved right so he has he basically got two free moves and that's bad for us because if white starts right like white plays the first move in chess right that means that he's the one who's like controlling the game because he's the one who moved first so now basically it's like black has two extra moves so he's caught up and now it's hard for white to get an advantage so important rule don't bring out your queen too early all right now we brought out a pawn so now we got out so we said don't bring out your queen and your rooks are not important to bring out like you can bring them out later in the game all right so what does that leave that leaves your knight of bishops and your knights okay all right your bishops and your knights right so that is the main pieces that you want to bring out in the opening your bishops and your knights so what is a good move to develop a bishop or a knight does anyone have a suggestion All right, uh, Nicholas, right? Yeah. Do you have a suggestion? Yes. Um, we could move, so, the bishop, we could move it right next to the pawn, kind of like one, um, Here? yeah, like that. All right, so bishop to f4. All right, that's a good move. You developed your bishop out. So that's, yeah, that's one example. Can anybody, someone different, give me a different example of a good move? It doesn't have to be, okay, uh, Shri? So what do you want to do to the castle as fast as you can? So basically you can move the, like, the knight in front of the king forward to yeah. the place, like, the same place, and then you can get the knight, the both of the knights up. So you want to go here? 
and then if and then the black can play their move, and then you can get your, then you can get your bishop out, and then you can just, yeah. So you want to? I'm. And what I'm you understanding. You want to put your knight here, right? Yeah. Nice. Okay, that's also a good move. Putting your knight there. You developed your knight. All right, and there's probably one other move that we should say. Mm. All right, uh, Nicholas. We c you can move the bishop in front of the queen so that the queen doesn't get like um e I mean destroyed. So like here. Well, the thing is, the queen, it's like a pretty strong piece, so it doesn't really need protection. Like, it can handle itself. So, it's usually best if you, like, I said you want to move your pieces towards the center, right? So, like, attacking one of these squares. So, the first move that we said, bishop f4, that attacks this square in the center, all right? The second move we said, knight to f3, that attacks this square and this square in the center. And one more move, which is knight to c3, this, you can attack the other two squares in the center. So the main three moves here would have been bishop to f4, knight to f3, or knight to c3. All right, but uh, before we go on, I just want to make sure that we all understand notation so it's like easier for us to understand each other. So let me just open up a blank board. All right, so basically, this this notation is basically how you say a square's name. So like, uh, I've noticed that you guys are saying like this square. Okay, let's just like go back here. You this square is like the square in front of the king, and that's right. But like, let's say that you've played a lot of moves, all right, and then somehow the king ends up over here. Then this square is not the square in front of the king, right? It's a bit hard to describe. So basically, notation is a way to describe this square or like this square or any square on the board with like a certain set of coordinates basically all right so like how do i describe this all right you guys know how well if you live in a house or an apartment or something like that right so if you live in a house or apartment let's just imagine that each one of these squares is one house all right all 64 squares on the chessboard is one house, okay? So how would you distinguish each house? Usually for, in the real world, we have addresses, right? So like Natoma Station, all right? Let's say this is Natoma Station, why not? All right, and then this is, it's another school, uh, Sandra J. Gallardo, right? It's another school in our district, right? And this is Sutter Middle School. There's like, there's different ways to distinguish square places in the real world, right? So to do that in chess, what we have is, oh uh, yeah, Nicholas, do you have a question? Well, is there is there a school for each uh, block, or is it just for those certain squares? Uh, are you talking about like on the chessboard? Yeah. Oh, I'm just like showing this for example cases. They're not exactly schools. I'm just like saying something to make oh, it easier okay. to understand. All right. So now let's just, so how we describe it in chess is we have no letters on the bottom and numbers on the side. Now you might've been wondering what these meant. Okay. So each num letter, it corresponds to a column. All right. So like, this is the A column, all right? This is the B column. This is the C, okay, one second. This is the D column. E, F, G, and H. All right, so think about it, right? You guys live on, like, I live on Bay Line Circle. That's like, um, that's like a street name, right? So like, if you think about it, you could like think about it this way. This is like a street, all right? And each of the numbers, which are this, these are like specific house numbers, all right? So if we took Natoma Station's address, I don't know exactly where it is, actually. I'm just making up something. But like, let's say it's 500 in Natoma Station Drive, all right? That is, 500 is what the row represents. And 
uh, Natoma Station Drive is the street. So, in the same way, let's say you're looking at a, let's say you're looking at D. Okay, this is the D row. And if I find, ask you to find D6, you'd only go to the D row. You'd first check the D row, and then you'd move, you'd look at the sixth row, all right? The D column and look at the sixth row. So that's this square, right? So basically, where do these two arrows intersect? Right there. All right, and then if I do this, it's on the G row and this, or the G column and the seventh row, and it intersects right there. All right, so let's go around with the test. All right, I'm just gonna ask each one of you. I'm gonna like highlight a square, and each one of you is gonna tell me what square this is. All right, so let's go. I'm just gonna like start how it is on the like video order. So this square, um, oh, there's no need to raise your hands. I'm just gonna like go one by one. All right, uh, this square, um, Saujana, Saujanya. F. All right, yes, that's right, it's F. And then what number is it on? Um, four. Exactly. So this square is F4. Nice. All right. Then, Revanche, what is this square? D6. Nice. All right. Shanti, is that your name? C3. Uh, Shanti, uh, are you there? All right. Uh, let's go to someone else. Uh, Rakesh, do you know what square this is? Um, G three. Nice. Uh, Nicholas, what square is this? C eight. C eight. Oh, there's two Nicholases, isn't there? All right. That's interesting. Okay. Yeah, but both of you are right. It is C eight. You can call you can call me Nick and you can call the other yeah. one Nicholas. All right, so Nick and Nicholas, that'll make it easier. Okay, and Shri, what square is this? That is F seven. All right, and Nicholas this time. Do you know what square this is? A one. Nice. Elizabeth, do you know what square this is? H2. Nice. All right. 100%. Good job. All right. Now I think you guys all understand uh, notation. So we're done with that. So now basically, but we can go back. And this is what you've been seeing on the side here. Like, just looks like random numbers and letters. But basically, what it's giving is like an ordered set of like what moves have been played. So, first move, the pawn went to d4. All right, D4. All right, usually what happens is you don't, um, if there's a pawn, you don't say, you say just D4. But for this class, I want you guys to say pawn to D4 and stuff like that. All right, so we have pawn D4. All right, then black played pawn to D6, right? D6. All right, then let's say we played um, bishop to F4. The bishop went to f4, right? And then we had, or we could have played knight to f3, right? The knight went to f3, or knight to c3, knight c3. All right, nice. Okay, so now let's just keep on blowing along. So now, hmm, let's look specifically at knight to f3. All right, and the reason that this is probably the best move is what you want to do in uh, when you're playing the opening is you want to try and castle, okay? I'll just tell you that's right now. Castling is the main goal of the opening, all right? So if you want to castle, remember we said in the beginning, uh, you can only castle when there's no pieces blocking your king and your rook. Right now there's the bishop and this knight. So imagine if they were like, okay, wrong one. If they were like this, if there's no bishop or knight, then you could castle, right? So that's what we want to go for. We want to make sure there's no bishop or knight. 
So the way to do that, you start moving them away. So let's look specifically at knight to f3. It's probably the best move. Okay, knight f3. So now let's say black plays knight to f6, right? We have the f and 6. Now, what's the next piece we need to bring out? The bishop, right? The bishop on f1. But can the bishop move anywhere? Nicola, Nick? Uh, no, he cannot. Exactly. The bishop is just being blocked by both of his pawns, right? Yeah. So that means that it, he can't move right now. So what's the solution to this? We want to move one of these pawns, okay? And like I said before, you should try and move your pawns towards the center. So if I move this pawn, let's say I went here, right? This isn't a bad move, but you can see that it's not attacking the center, right? The pawn isn't attacking the center. But let's say I moved this pawn. Now this pawn, it's attacking one of the central squares, right? It's attacking the square D4. So that's why E3 is a good move here. Okay, let's look at E3. So now we're moved one of our pawns. It's into the center. The knight is attacking the center. And the bishop can now move out. So let's say now black plays their knight here. Can you guys tell me why this might not be a very good move? What do you guys think? How about I'll just go around everyone and just like ask them to give a guess. It's fine if you get it wrong because like we're just learning here. Uh, Saujinya, why do you think this might be a bad move? Um, because um, it might kill your rook. Alright, so you're saying that the rook is like left undefended? Mm-hmm. Alright. Um, revenge? Revanche? I don't think... Yeah. Because it's uh, one of the knights are only attacking the ro the knight and the, and the pawn and the queen is protecting the knight and it's not attacking anything. Alright. So the knight isn't attacking anything. It's not really doing anything, right? And they're just blocking the squ middle squares. Alright. Uh, Shanti? Why do you think this was a bad move? Alright, uh, I'm a little... Keep going. Uh, Rakesh? It's actually Vishnu. Oh, Vishnu. Alright, Vishnu? Uh, same as Ravanch. Alright, same as Ravanch. All right, um, Shri? Um, yeah, same as Ravenge, but I think we could, yeah, no. same as Ravenge. All right, Nicholas? Like, um, like it isn't attacking anything. Oh, and when the, when the knight moves, Move up forward. The the pawn can take it. All right, uh, Nick. Why do you think this was a bad move, moving the knight here? Um, it's a bad move because our other knight that are uh, that's on the others that's on our team, the white knight, could destroy the black knight if it moves again. But if it moves back where it was, then it's safe. Alright, and Elizabeth? Same as um, Nick and Revanche. Alright, so yeah, all of you were getting there. Like, you basically got the right answer. So, basically, the main reason why uh, Knight BD7 was... um. And knight d7 wasn't the best move was because it's not really attacking anything right like it can't go here because the pawn right and it can't go here because the pawn 
so the pawn is defending both of the squares the knight's going. It's not really doing anything there. A better move might have been knight here, because then at least it's attacking the pawn. Even though the pawn is defended, maybe later on this pawn is undefended, right? Then we could take it. So knight c6 would have been better. But a an even more important reason why this isn't a good move, I think one of you, I don't remember, pointed this out. It's blocking everything. Like, if you see before, this bishop, it could go here, right? And this king, or this queen, it didn't really have that many squares, but it could move here and then go out, right? Now, when you put your knight here, the bishop can't move, the queen can't move, and this knight can't go back. Let's say it was, like, attacked, this knight. The knight can't move back. It's just stuck. So, this would be a really bad move. So, you want to make sure you don't block your pieces. Alright, you want to have, like, at least one square for them to move. If they don't have a square to move, try and give them some, like, breathing room, right? Okay, so now let's say knight bd7. So, black played a bad move. Okay. Now what we want to do, we want to continue our plan. So now we move out our bishop. So where do you guys want to move the bishop? Just give me a square. Remember, try and like put it into a square that it attacks the center. Alright, let's go Nicholas. We should put the bishop to b5. Alright, bishop b5. That's a good move. Any other suggestions? All right, Nick. We can move it to um, C4. All right, yeah, that's an, also a good move. And Vishnu? Vishnu, do you have an answer? Or maybe not. D3. Alright, D3, yeah. So those are the three main moves. Nice. Bishop D3, Bishop C4, Bishop B5. All of these uh, moves, they attack a lot of squares, right? Bishop B5 is good. Oh, that This would be a really bad move you just end up taking. Bishop B5, this move is good because you're attacking the knight. Alright? Bishop C4 is good because you're attacking the center square. And bishop d3 is good because you're attacking this center square. Yeah, Alright. So let's just choose. Let's just go bishop d3. Alright. I'll choose that. Okay. So now white plays bishop to d3. And now let's say black goes knight to b6. Alright. So the bishop can move again. Knight b6. And now the main move right we moved out our pawns right attacking the middle we've got our knight we've got our bishop and finally the king and rook they're open now they can castle so to castle remember you move your king two squares to the right and then the rook jumps over okay that's important so now we've castled so now let's look once again at the three major parts of the opening all right i'm gonna send this in the chat so number one you want to move a pawn into the center all right then number two you want to develop your knights and bishops right so here we've developed this knight or sorry this bishop and this knight all right and number three you want to castle so castling is basically you're moving your king two squares to the right, and then your rook jumps over. Oh, not like that. The rook jumps over the king right there. All right, so if you guys want, you could, like, write these three down somewhere. I'll give you, like, a minute or two to do that. All right, so uh, if you could, like, write this in a notebook or, like, take a picture of this, that would be nice because this is an uh, important part of the opening principles. It'll probably be good for you to know this later on. All right, and also, yeah. Okay, nice. I'll just wait. wait, can you can you wait? Yeah, yeah. I'll give you until six thirty-two. That's two minutes.
Thanks. Yeah, Nicholas, do you have a question? What was the answer again? What, what was the question, I mean? Oh, okay. I just wanted, uh, if you could check the Google chat, I sent, like, a message with, like, the th three things that you need for the opening, the opening principles. So, moving a pawn into the center, develop your knights and bishops and castle. If you could, like, take a picture of that with your mom or dad's phone, or you could write it down in a notebook, that'd be important because it's going to come up later on. Elizabeth, do you have a question? No, I was just saying, my brother um, asked my mom for the phone to take a picture. Okay, yeah, that works. That's why he wanted two minutes for it. Alright, so, uh, alright, did everyone get it noted down? If you can, just like give me a thumbs up. Alright. My reactions don't work, so I'm just throwing, showing a thumbs up. Alright, nice. So, um, if you didn't get it written down, then I think you could just write it down at like near the end of class. Okay. So now we have this. Alright, we've got moving a pawn into the center. We started with... Let's start from the beginning. We've moved a pawn into the center. Then we developed our knights, right? Developing our knights, moving our knights towards the center. And then now we wanted to move this bishop, or sorry, we wanted to move this bishop, right? But it's being blocked by these pawns. So we decided to move this pawn because it's closer to the center. All right. And then our opponent played a bad move. They played knight here to d7. And we said that's a bad move because this bishop is being blocked and this queen is being blocked. And then we moved out. Okay, I think we chose to do this. We moved our bishop. All right, now our bishop is out of the way and we can castle. And also the bishop is attacking the center, right? And then our opponent moved his knight away so that his bishop can, oh, his bishop can move out. And finally, we castled. Now, in this position, what we have is like, close to the end of the opening all right we've completed the three main things that we need to do moving pawns into the center developing our knights and bishops and then castling if you remember these three things you will should be good for the opening all right like it it really doesn't get any more complicated than this right as long as you play like just trying to get to castling then your king will be safe all right and there shouldn't be too much trouble okay nice so just remember, move your pawn into the center, develop your knights and bishops, and then castle. It's going to be important, all right? So now, all right, it's you guys are probably tired from all of this. So instead of continuing on with more opening principles and whatnot, we are going to go to tactics or puzzles. And we're just going to look at a few puzzles just to train. Just, mm, yes. We'll go from like around a 500 to a 1500, nope, 1500 rating range. And we'll just do, we can look at basic checkmates, mate in one, and also scholar's mate, okay. Basically, what these are is just like checkmating positions where you have to find a checkmate for either side. Okay, so this is white to move, all right? And what it's checkmate in one move, all right? And if you know the answer, then you can raise your hand. And in two minutes, I will ask everyone. So I'll just go one by one and ask each person to give a move. All right, so all of you guys have two minutes so at 637 I'm gonna be asking you guys for your answers
What was the question again? I didn't hear that. Yeah, so the question is, basically, you want to find a checkmate in one move. So, you guys all know what checkmate is, right? Like, the opponent's king is in check, and then they can't move their king. They can't block, they can't capture, all right? Stuff like that. And also, um, yeah, so it's checkmate in one move, basically. Alright, let's start with, um, from the top I'm just gonna go everyone one by one and ask you what you think of the move is. Start with, uh, Saojinya. What did you say again? Uh, what, can you find a good move for white, a checkmate in one move? It's white to move. Um, you can, you, you could, you can, you could move the, the other pawn, like, the, that pawn, I mean not the pawn, the 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 knight, I mean the rook, and when, if you move the rook the side, I mean the castle the side to the black, it will make it will make um, it will just kill the um. So you want to do this? Castle. Yeah. All right. So Salginio says rook takes e8. So. The, re the way that we say that is this rook, right? It's we are choosing this rook and it's taking on e8. So you want to move the rook to e8. So rook to e8. You just say that. All right. And Ravanch, what do you think? Um, rook. Yeah. Rook c7. Which rook? This rook or this rook? Um, the rook, uh, the rook, uh, and, c and c1. All right, so Revanche says rook from c1 to c7. All right, how about Shanti? Shanti? Oh, you're on mute, by the way, if you're talking. All right, we can't hear you. Um, rock. Uh, sorry, Vishnu. What do you think? Um, the bottom rook to c seven. All right, so same as Revanche. Uh, Nick. Nick, what do you think? I think. If you move the um, rook from C1 um, to D1, it give the um, king less option because the rook at C8 is already blocking the top and the bottom. All right, so you say rook to D1, okay? Let's keep going. Uh... But uh, destroy it. All right. Uh, Shri? The same thing as Ravon because, like, what if the king can't the king can't move back because that's still a check. The king can't go down because the pawn could take, and the king can wait. The king can go up. All right. So you said rook to c seven. Yeah, meant... what Ravon said. All right, huh, Nicholas. Um, 
Rook to C7. Alright. Nice. And then Elizabeth? Same at, as Nick. Same as Nick. So Rook to D1. So now let's look at these three moves, all right? So first, let's take a look at rook takes e8. It's like, let me just open this in an analysis board. All right. Let's just take a look at this. Rook to, uh, so this is the position, and we looked at rook takes c8. That was one move. Rook to d1. That was another move. And rook to c7. That was the third move. All right. Let's start with rook takes e8. All right. This, by no means, it's. Oh wait, share this time. All right. Can you see this, by the way? Now. All right. Okay. Yeah, I think it froze or something. Yeah. Okay. okay. So we we were. I was just. I just put out the three moves. So after the king moves here, we had rook takes here. And that was one option. Then uh, some others said rook take rook to d1, and some people said rook to one to c7. All right, let's look first at rook takes e8. Now this is not a bad move, right? So you take the rook, all right, and now when the king takes, all right, because look the king can take here, all right, because the king it can move one square in every direction. Right now it can take the rook. All right, now you have a rook versus a rook. And then now let's count. So both sides obviously still have their king. And we have four pawns, and our opponent has five pawns. All right, so now we're down one pawn. And that's not bad, right? Like, we can still keep fighting for the win after this, but it might not be the best option. Now rook to d1, all right? This had the right idea, but I think the wrong execution. So... You can see, I think what your thought, your guys' thought process was, is that this rook is giving check, right? And this rook is blocking all of this. So the only square that the king can move is over here. So you, that was a good, good idea, right? But the problem with this is, this rook is actually undefended. Because remember, the, before, we said that the king can move in every direction. The every direction, right? And back here, this rook was the only thing that was defending this rook. So now if the rook moves, now this rook is undefended. So this king can take. Alright? So that doesn't work either. And now rook to c7. Now why is this the winning move? Alright? So rook to c7. The reason that this is wins is let's take a look. Alright? So remember, when you're in check... There's three things you could do. Capture, block, or move. And we learned that last year. So, can you capture this piece? Can the king take this rook? No, because this rook here is defending, right? Now, can the king block? I mean, you can't really block unless you like somehow like stick one of your rooks in between the squares, right? That's illegal, so you can't block. All right, and now, can the king move? Now, this is the important one. Let's take a look. And the king obviously can't go here or here because his own pieces are blocking. Okay, so let's just immediately get rid of that. And we said that the king can't capture either, right? Because this rook is defending. So, no capturing. Now, let's... Can the king go here? No. Because this rook is blocking the square. The king can't go there. Can the king go here? No. Because this rook over here is blocking. So this rook, alright, is blocking the square. I can't go there. All right. Can the king go here? No, because the pawn, the pawn is blocking that square, right? Because the pawn, it always attacks sideways, right? It moves straight up, but it attacks sideways. Diagonal, I guess, is a better way to put it. So it's attacking diagonal. So now this square is diagonal, so the pawn is blocking. Nicholas, do you have a, or Nick, do you have a question? There's one way the Oh no, he can't. He's in like complete check. Yeah, Never so mind. Uh, yeah, we'll just keep looking. It's at because it. I thought he could go diagonal the other way, but then I'm like, no, it's because the rook already blocked that. Yeah, so let's say the king can't go here, right? Because this rook is already blocking this one. 
And finally, the king can't take this rook because this rook here, it's guarding this rook. Alright, that means all nine squares around it, the king can't go anywhere. So that means that it's in checkmate. Alright, so this time we only got to one tactic. Usually we'll start off with like two or three tactics or puzzles just to like warm up everyone and then we'll uh start the actual class okay so um for this week um i'll just give you guys a little something to oh i just did not mean to share i'll give you guys a little something to do so i want you guys to try and memorize the three things the opening principles that we talked about today so the three opening principles number one move a pawn into the center Number two, develop your knights and bishops. And number three, castle. All right. So by next week's class, I would like that you guys know those three because it'll be important when we keep on going uh, to do this. All right. So it's like a tiny bit of homework, but I mean, just memorize it. It shouldn't take more than five minutes. All right. Okay. All right. Well, then we are already two minutes okay. over time. So I will see you guys next Friday, same time. And yeah, have a nice week. Bye. 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 Bye.